Hello fellow Leggers, thank you for joining us once again for a theatrical experience. We're here at the Radisson Blue Hotel on Bloomsbury Street. Yeah, absolutely. And you say theatrical experience, but it's also a bit of a foodie experience. And I don't know if they have deja vu, but maybe they could check with the kitchen, because we've done something a bit similar before. Different theme this time, because tonight is the turn of the Faulty Towers dining experience. So as usual, stick around to um, see what we think of the food. Yeah, see what we think <laughs> of the fun and find out how many stars. So this time it's Forty Towers The Dining Experience. We've done something similar. The same company did Only Fools and Horses The Dining Experience, not the musical. Yeah, not the musical, thank God. The Dining Experience, and they've invited us along to see this or indulge in this. Yeah, I mean, we really Be a enjoyed part of this. the fact that it was they made immersive. Only Fools and Horses so immersive. And I mean, this is set in a hotel, and Forty Towers is set in a hotel, so that's going to amplify the whole experience even more, surely. Yeah, because I was thinking if this is a dining experience, a lot about Faulty Towers was set in yeah. a hotel, right? Absolutely. And now it's the world's longest running and most sought after tribute to that iconic British sitcom is right here. Now the London residency opened in October 2012 and has been attracting fans of the sitcom and fans of food, so basically everybody, ever since. The original sitcom on which this experience is based ran for just two series, 12 episodes in total, between 1975 and 1979. So a long time ago, yet it still inspires comedy writers today. It's considered the gold standard of sitcom writing. And everything from then to Gavin and Stacey says it took its inspiration from Faulty Towers and okay. it was actually ranked top in a BFI list of the 100 greatest British TV shows ever made. Ever made. Ever made. Now, okay. set in that haphazard talky hotel, it's centred around the tense, rude and browbeaten owner, Basil Faulty, his bossy wife and what, I say she was iconic wife, Sybil, and their hapless Spanish waiter, Manuel. Okay, I, I, I know it. I, I don't think I've seen all of them. Well, but we can excuse you because you are from Barcelona. So, we'll excuse that. Um, it's having a residency here, but it also heads out on tour as well. And we'll talk to you a bit more about how you can catch it once we've seen what they have to offer. So, um, just like last time, we won't be able to film during the experience. So, stick around to the end to hear all of our thoughts and find out how many stars. I think we managed to get through Faulty Towers of Dining Experience without anyone mentioning the war. Is that a reference? Again, are you from <laughs> Barcelona? Where have you been for the past 40 years? Why, what, what, what's the reference there? There's in the sitcom. Do you know what? We'll, what it's on Netflix, right? <laughs> oh, I, I don't, promise I don't, we'll. Just tell me! Well, I, I want to know! No, we'll watch it. If we it will. wasn't in the Dining Experience and I haven't seen it, then you didn't. How was it? It was absolutely fantastic. And now that specific reference wasn't in the dining experience, although we still got the um, frog march impression, the German frog march impression. There were certain things that I recognised. I thought, aha, this is a key iconic rant, for example. That's a key John Cleese moment. That's a key Sybil moment. That's a key Manuel moment. Yep. And I think that's the point. All of those things that you expect to be there, Basil the Rat, um, Sybil's high-pitched um, squeals and laughter are all present in there. But what stood out for me hugely and made this so enjoyable was the skill of the cast to be able to improvise and engage an audience and a, a rather big audience on a Saturday night it's as well. It's a huge audience. I think for a cast of three mm. to engage so many, it must be no, over a hundred people. people. Yeah. yeah, over a hundred people all scattered in this quite a large room and yet we were all engaged throughout these big set pieces and individually interacted with all of us. Yeah. It was great. I was completely... They were switched on for the whole thing. In awe of every single one of those so cast members. So much energy. Because there is a risk when you take something that is so beloved, like we've seen with, in our experience, Only Fools and Horses, the musical, and you try and do something with it, 
there's a fear that you can Try alien. and make it a musical, yeah. but you and can, it fails. There's a fear. There's a fear you can alienate some of your audience who do hold those characters so dear to them. In this, because the actual sitcom was set in a hotel it lends that itself had a so res well. restaurant, yes. it's a perfect, perfect fit. And as a result, yeah. it's pretty damn close to being the perfect night out. I want to say it is. I enjoyed it from start to finish. I was grinning through the whole thing. You were laughing like a drain, <laughs> like Did literally. You say, um, Considering you don't know the references as well as I do. I mean, let no. me just say full, dis Familiar. full disclosure here. When I was a kid, we had a VHS cassette with three episodes of, of um, Forty Towers on it, and I wore that tape out. Okay. Everything I know about comedy, I learned from that. And you know, I'm a comedy genius. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. It lends itself so well to now, that setting. Uh, to that setting. Yeah. Um, so in terms of a narrative, I guess there's no narrative. The only narrative is we are invited to dinner. Yeah, we are, and we are the guests in, in Forty Towers having dinner in the restaurant. So we at are the part hotel. of the narrative. They're yeah. just trying to complete a dinner service, mm -hmm. uh, and it's being done by them. Yes. And that is the narrative. Yeah. And there's so much slapstick humour in there. Some mm -hmm. clever, witty lines. There's uh, they get to know the audience by name yes. and you're called on at different and times. And referring back to that, they said it's not a panto but it has elements of those best panto elements where you pick on someone in the front row and then later on in the show you come back to them and Absolutely. you pick them out again. Oh, do you remember Natalie when you did that? And it's it's used in such a way as to just make us feel immersed. It's yes. an immersive experience. And there are people here who are celebrating their birthdays, anniversaries, yeah. the audience were up for it and the cast rose to the occasion. Talk about the cast let's mention them all individually I mean there are only three of them so it won't take long but my god are they masters of their craft Jack Baldwin as Basil himself he was great he, he, it, he they're it, all great he, they're fantastic yeah he totally just inhibited John Cleese like he became that character he, was, he became he did. Basil Fawlty as played by John Cleese as a result of it never feeling like a poor impersonation I didn't feel as if it was an impersonation as well I felt as if it was him and I bought into him as a, a, a character and a committed performer uh, I thought he was great Karina Garnett as Sybil just had all of the sibilisms. She had the laughs and she had the, the fear. She holds Basil by the balls. Yes. And she's got them in a vice. And you that fear, that relationship between the two of them, she played that so commandingly. I, I guess not knowing Faulty Tower so well, I know of it, but I think it's seeing it now, it's such a good dynamic to see this crazy Basil Faulty, and yet she is just so still and has such control and presence and domination in her moments of stillness the status is there so it's a really good narrative of um, power dynamics yeah and well played which that's the point in, for, this. in terms of the writing really stood out to me I thought okay I see why this works is that as that power dynamic what about Karina bringing that to life though Karina I thought she yeah. was great she looked great she had the voice she had the laugh each time she laughed did the laugh everyone was in hysterics yeah I thought she was great and also, last but not least, and possibly my favourite, Oliver Harrison as Manuel. It's difficult in a, in a show 40 years after it premiered to not run the slightly borderline racist, of being racist. xenophobic stereotype. Yeah. But do you know what? I know there was such a mixed audience tonight, myths, ethnicities, I know there were people there from Greece, people there from across the world, and I think you just accept what it is. Do you know what I thought worked quite well is I think that even if you didn't know Faulty Towers you would still have a really good time. I would recommend this for tourists who are just coming who may have never seen it before. I think you would still buy into it. I think you'd get it because it's about the characters and the text and the relationships and very slapstick. And the way that Oliver played Manuel. And the way he did that was great. I thought what I enjoyed most of all as well was when they were coming to the tables and Oliver did that a lot. Mm -hmm. There was lots of just little interaction and sometimes you can recreate the same stuff for the same tables. Like you have one routine and you do it at each table. I was watching and there was individual stuff that he was doing 
thinking on his feet Completely at one stage. Adaptable, right? Like I, I don't, I don't think it's just a spoiler because I think it was quite unique. But dragging a child out when they thought there was a fire, like save the children, save the children, and which he, was unique to this audience. Yeah. I thought it was genius. He's Absolute just, genius. That is that is the best sort of comedian that he's able to take to look at a situation and in their minds be bold and go just, with it. No, but in their minds they can actually go, how can I make this funny specific to this environment? And as quick as a flash, Oliver managed to do it. So I think you're saying on an intellectual level absolutely have that awareness Very and connection smart not just aware, in it but also what's going clever on clever comedy absolute clever comedy I don't think there's much we can talk about in terms of sets because it is just the setting of the hotel we need there's to mention the food items. though oh, because do it is a dining experience yes what did you think of the food I've got to say the food is excellent um, to start there was a really lovely tomato and basil soup that, yep. that tasted really homemade with a number of bread rolls for us wink wink the if you come and see of the bread rolls was um, interesting. A moment Let's of just genius. Say. Also, the main course. We can only talk about the meat eater options because we, we didn't have meat. the so we alternatives. Didn't, have, oh, didn't know about the alternatives. Yep. But it was a beautiful sort of chicken, chicken quarter yeah. with fondant potatoes vegetable, and vegetables lovely, uh, in a beautiful jus. It was yeah. lovely, well seasoned, peppery. And then the dessert was like a lemon mousse, like yes, a firm was. lemon mousse with a lemon jelly on the bottom, and it all felt what I would expect of so a, qu a high quality hotel Absolutely. high standard it very high nice. standard it was nice I was starving loved. as well which really helped <laughs> but <laughs> loved, loved the food <laughs> worth Co the wait coffee to finish as well and table water on the table so there's drinks of that variety too but there's a bar you can get drinks at the beginning wine beers yeah I, I think it's really good it's a real two for one mm. not only do you get a great show you get a good meal you get a good meal oh. so what's not to love and the way really? to a legger's heart is through his stomach <laughs> through so, their stomach so um, talking anything about else? the of heart I think we should rate it Okay, well I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give. Faulty Towers, the dining experience from Breaker Legas to them is... Five! Five stars from us to them, it's like Eurovision. Full house, yeah I mean well we're, we're <laughs> going to Spain aren't we, we're going to Manuel's I homeland. See. It's a full house, I really enjoyed it, it got a standing ovation from everyone. Yeah. Come the end. I can't think of a better night out. For everybody, there were kids there having a good time. Yeah. Your parents would love it. My grandmother yep. would love it, and everyone in between. As, in terms of this, well. in terms of this sort of a show, I think it's the gold standard. Certainly for anything I've seen. Now they've been to things like murder mysteries and stuff, uh, where did there's you say food. It was um, very well, high ranked. Yeah. Amongst, um, I mean, it's one of the top things to do in London on TripAdvisor. It's like 17 in events and concerts. Considering or it's London, yeah, where I'm sure. That there's a freaking load of stuff going of on, and very deservedly so. Absolutely, it gets... rightly so. Now you can catch it here in its London residency, or you can catch it in tours. It has a touring production that goes out to hotels and venues all around the UK. Fantastic. But better than that, guys, it's going to the Edinburgh Fringe. Wow. And this cast that we saw tonight are the main cast that are taking it to Edinburgh, who we can vouch for are bloody brilliant. So if you yes. find yourself up in Edinburgh, any time between the 1st and 26th of August, they are having a run at the Fringe twice every day. Wow, and that's it's, hardcore. It is hardcore, because I was watching them thinking, this is knackering, and I knew yeah. it was the second time they did that today. But they are, if anyone can knock it out of the park, it's these guys, absolutely. Also, if you do come to the London residency, you get a voucher code, which means you get £10 off the Only Fools and Horses dining experience that we reviewed. So you can wow. see this, the gift and that then keeps on giving. you can go and see another great dining experience. But you, you said you should you get gift vouchers, and you said you'd make a great gift. Yes, I, I think this would make a great gift if you're stuck with something to give someone for their birthday, for their anniversary. Did you say they do gift vouchers? Yeah, they do gift vouchers. Like, I would recommend you give this as a gift to them. Yeah. I think this is a great experience. Sometimes you're stuck with something to give people. But, Club but, together, people, yeah. and give this to the people you love. You know, they will great, thank you for it. It makes a great leavers gift for somebody. You know, like if you're having an office whip round and you wanted to give somebody something for leaving I think this would be a great treat but yeah that's just what I think and just what I think what do you think if you had a trip to Faulty Towers the dining experience let us know down below perhaps you've taken advice and seen only fools and horses We'd love to hear about that too this theatre production company the interactive theatre international I just think get it right with this sort of thing they know what they're doing and they've got the infrastructure to make sure it works every time in every location we're the breaker leggers and we'll catch you again soon bye, bye.